Okay, I have a question today from Chris. What are your thoughts on total energy balance at the end of the day and net energy balance at the end of the week overriding small transient rises or fluctuations in insulin at meals? So let me tell you what he's asking here. You have the, the energy balance of your, your week or your day. In other words, a calorie deficit. If your goal is to lose weight or gain weight, you're gonna be in a calorie deficit or a calorie surplus. I'm assuming he's asking about weight loss because he's speaking of insulin and so forth and those differences per meal versus per day versus per week. So, so here's, the, uh, here's the example. Uh, somebody might say, my basal metabolic rate for a day is that high. Well, that means over the course of seven days, that is times seven, that's how much I eat. And I could divide that all the way down to one meal a day, such as intermittent fasting, or five or six or seven. So as long as I get the right amount of calories for my goal, does it matter how I eat them through the day or through the week? In other words, could I have two massive days and then some really low days and still get the same amount of calories I need for the week? And, and obviously research shows that how you manage your, your food meal to meal does have a significant impact. It's absolutely true that the calorie input you have for a day or a week, a larger volume like that, if it's still a calorie deficit, would create a, a loss, a net loss. But other studies have shown that you can lose weight up to 50% faster taking those same calories and scheduling them differently, eating different quality levels of food, you know about the glycemic index and so forth, different ratios of macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. So the level of insulin, I'll give you an example if we, if we take that time frame down to just a single day. If I do intermittent fasting and I want 2,000 calories in one day, I could eat that all in one meal, right? 2,000 calories in one meal. That would mean I'm probably gonna have 150 or so grams of protein in one meal. It, try and choke that down. Um, you know, three, maybe 350 grams of carbs in one meal. That might sound fun until you've got the other 23 and a half hours of the day when you're eating nothing. And of course we know even a small meal in a calorie deficit at that meal time, that feeding time, you're still gonna be storing some body fat. You'll lose it later or use it later, but we still store. We're constantly storing and retrieving every single minute of the day. It is, as uh, Chris asked, the net that, that is a big factor, but a larger factor is how it's affecting your, your blood chemistry, your biochemistry, meal to meal. So the other end of that continuum would be grazing. What if I spread out my food, just nibbling every hour, I have eight meals a day, is that better? Uh, from a metabolic perspective, now you've got kind of a pro and con there. Metabolically, you are stimulating digestion and the thermic effect of food more often, but you never get enough to really spike it high enough because insulin doesn't just cause storage, it causes an increase in metabolic rate. So there's kind of a spot in the middle where most people tend to gravitate. And the kind of the norm, I think, for most people is three meals a day. When I travel to different countries, that's what basically everybody eats. If you're not in a bodybuilder mentality of eating you know, every two or three hours, most people have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you might have a snack here and there, and that's appropriate. So I, I think if you looked at all the studies collectively, you would find that those kind of toward the middle have the most consistent results, but you can lose on the other ends of the continuum. What's left out in a question like this is the sustainability factor. Can you eat like that? If you only graze throughout the day and you never get really caught up on hunger, are you gonna prevent yourself from eating too much later on top of what you had planned? Or if you're intermittent fasting and you only plan on eating once a day or twice a day, is that something you can do every day, every week? So all of those social variables matter, but the research is clear that both ends of that continuum would be the wrong place to be.